Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the features of Google Me that come with the Google Workspace for Education Plus package. So I'm in Google Meet now and I'm going to open up a new meeting and begin to show you these features. Now I've broken these down into three different categories. One feature is around who is on the call. One is around how we make the call more accessible. And the third is around the in-call features that you can use when on a Google Meet. So first of all, let's talk about who's on the call. Now on a standard Google education package, you can have 100 participants on a call. If you have the teaching and learning upgrade, you can have 250 people on a call. But if you have the Google Plus licenses for your domain, then you can have up to a thousand people on the call. If a thousand people isn't enough for you, then you can also access YouTube live streaming. And I can click on the activities tab to see this and you can see it here for live streaming. Now this is across your domain only. It's not an external stream. So if you've got more than a thousand participants, you could stream internally, start streaming. Okay, so now we're streaming and I've got this link so I could copy that link and I could send it out to other participants if they aren't able to be one of the thousand participants in the call. Obviously it might be as well that I don't want a thousand participants. I only might want say 10 participants in the call who are actually participating in the conversation, etc. And actually everyone else is just looking on. And so this is another way of enabling that. From a participant's perspective, I'm going to put in the link I just copied, hit enter. And so they're waiting for the stream to begin and now the streams there they can click here to watch live and they'll be watching the stream as it happens once i'm done with the streaming i can click stop streaming and then it's just those back in the call again another feature for access is the ability to dial in now this has been there before but only for the us and canada now being in the uk we actually turned off that feature so we didn't get people inadvertently dialing in um, using those international rates and now if I go into the meeting details you can see I've got a dial in for the GB for this call and I can share that so people can also access the call via the phone and the last thing around who's on the call is I get an attendance tracker this means at the end of the call I'll be told who joined the call when they joined and when they left as well so this is great that you don't actually have to take a register while on the call for any reason but you can wait till the end of the call and it will give you that data Next, we're going to look at making the call more accessible. Now, a new feature that's just come out is called tile pairing. Now, I've only got one other person on the call, but imagine you're on the call with a lot of people, but you want somebody else's tile to appear next to yours when you're speaking. One of the main examples given for this is if someone was doing sign language. So I could be speaking, the other person could be doing sign language, but if I'm speaking, you're only going to see me as a tile. Now what I can do instead, I can actually pair myself. So if I click on my participants and I click on the three dots, I can then ask to pair my tiles. Now the other person is then sent a request so that when they then, let me go over and accept that, then anyone else would then see the two tiles paired next to each other when I'm speaking. Next, we're going to talk about call transcripts. Now call transcripts, are a way of taking what I'm speaking and putting it into a transcript so that other people can then access that transcript later. A really good way of utilizing this tool is so that if you're in a meeting, rather than taking notes in the meeting, you can then go back and refer to the transcript. You could use AI, for example, to summarize the transcript and put it into different bullets or actions or to extract the actions. So we can really use this feature wisely. To turn this on, if I go onto the activities icon and then scroll down, I can see transcripts here. So I have to start the transcription. If I click start, it's obviously there. The warning was to say, make sure everyone's in agreement. Just like with the video recording previously, we want to make sure that those who are going to speak are in agreement with that being recorded. Once I'm happy with this and I've finished my meeting, I can click stop transcription. Once I've stopped transcription, it's going to save that onto my Google Drive and then that will be sent to me via email. And as you can see here at the moment, only English can be transcribed, but I expect that will change over time. 
Another way of making the call accessible is with video recording. So if I click on here, we can see recording and I can have it with captions or without. So I could put captions on. Here I can also start the transcript. So rather than doing it in two separate places, I can start the transcript, start recording, click start, again getting the permission of everyone on the call, and then it's recording. So this is a great way of making your session more accessible to people who perhaps couldn't attend at the time. Once I'm happy with this, again, I'll stop recording and that will be sent to me and notified to me as well. The next thing we're going to look at is live translated captions. If I turn captions on, and anyone can do this on their own device, and it's for you only, so you can see at the moment my captions coming on for what I'm saying. Now, if I go into my settings, so I click on the three dots here, settings, I can go under captions and I can change the language of the meeting, for example, but I can also turn on translated captions. If I wanted the captions to appear in a different language, so for example, French, I can turn that off. And then from then on, all of my captions are going to be instantly translated into a different language of my choosing. So this will be a great way of non-native speakers being able to access the call um, in their own language. And particularly with an education environment, you could look at how non-English speaking students could use this to access a lesson in a more accessible way. So the last feature we're going to look at when we think about accessibility is noise cancellation. Now this is something, again, you have to turn on in the settings. I've got it on here under audio. And this is a way of just cancelling out any background noise that might be a distraction on the call. So the last area we're going to look at for these Google Workspace for Education Plus features in Google Meet is around the in-call features. If I click on the Activities tab, we can see some of these here. So we've got one is Breakout Rooms. So if I click on Breakout Rooms, you can then go and send people into breakout rooms. You can pre-populate this in a calendar invite. I have another video that goes into this in a lot more depth, so do check that out as well. You have polls and questions. So if I click on polls, I can start a poll. So I could ask a question, then put my answers in there. And then if I'm ready right now, I could launch it. Um, but if I'm not ready to do it now, I could save it. And that saves it as a draft for later. Now, this is a good way of, if you know you're going to be asking these polls within your call, for you to get on there early, set up the polls so they're ready to go without you having to type them in during your call. So if I'm ready for this, I can click on Edit. Now, it does give me the option as well if I want responses to appear without names. Uh, this is for the other people in the call. You, as the host of the call, will get the responses sent to you with the names of participants on that poll. So in that sense, it's not completely anonymous, but it is can be anonymous for those in the call. Once I'm ready, I can click Launch, and then this appears on the side, so people will see it here. They can click on Polls, and they'll see the poll, and they can answer that. When I'm ready, I can then end the poll and close the voting and talk about that on my call. Questions are also a great way of making the call more interactive. So I can turn these on in the activities icon, q and I can turn this on and then I can ask whether it shows all questions and I can sort these by pending, oldest, newest or popular. So then as people ask questions, these will appear under the Q&A and this is just a different way of managing the call because you could do it in the chat but maybe it keeps the chat for a bit more informal um, and it means you don't lose any questions in the chat as well because they're all put on here. In the settings as well, you do have some restrictions, but also as well, you can allow anonymous questions or not. So you're giving people a bit of an option there on how they want to ask their questions. So that wraps up our tutorial for today on the enhanced features of Google for Workspace Plus in Google Meet. I hope it was really helpful and this makes your Google Meet calls a lot more effective and enjoyable.